the Sheldon Concert Hall for an installment of the Sheldon Online Academy. First topic I'd like to address today is the topic of tone production and articulation at the piano. These are very broad, big, general topics, but I think it's important when we address the piano that we really consider them. I think uh, even after all these years playing the piano, I still consider, as I'm sitting at the piano, what sounds am I wanting to produce? How do I want to use my body in a healthy way to produce those sounds? So let's talk first about setting up the hands on the keyboard. I remember hearing and reading and seeing old primers, old textbooks, indicating that one should have a round shape, that perhaps one should be able to hold a small fruit in one's hand uh, so that everything is absolutely round. But as I've gone through life as a pianist, I've started to think that maybe it's too rigid to say that there's any one shape that's appropriate. I think that joints generally do not like to go against the grain <laughs> to actually go backward, as it were, in the case of a double-jointed person. Uh, but So, uh, in general, roundness is preferable. But the degree of roundness, um, you don't always want completely rounded. And in fact, the position that I would advocate for most people is sit comfortably, your back as straight as you can make it comfortably and try to reduce tension in your upper back and neck and then simply place your hands on the keyboard as if it were a table. I think because we live in a society in which typing is very important, we very often associate the action of playing a keyboard with the surface of the key and that's true in the case of the office QWERTY keyboard, but it's not true here actually. When you play the piano, you're participating in a big system, physical system of levers, wood, the soundboard, the strings. So this action, uh, which is a very complicated lever system, you're becoming part of it when you interface with this keyboard. So your entire body is actually part of the mechanism. So you don't want to think about yourself as just interfacing with the top of the key. And for this reason, I really like to just be comfortable with the piano. And for myself, I prefer to have my arms set relatively low by default so that I can simply drop. And I don't actually have to descend into the key. I think descending from the finger, it creates a nice incisive touch. But it isn't necessarily um, a natural default setting because you get a little bit of a ping and that pain, both the noise from the key descent um, and the urgent beginning of the sound. We must remember the piano is a diminuendo box. It gets softer after every single note we play. Um, anything that is front-loaded, any accent, uh, will produce a kind of stopping point in time. If we want to create long, melodic singing phrases, we have to think about the ends of our notes. And for this reason, uh, I like to stay close to the keys, too, when I'm playing especially melodically so that I, I can reduce that front of the note ping and sort of get the listener's ear into the end and the middle of the note a little bit better. So that's about the setup. Uh, in general tone production, I really like the way tone sounds, especially in a singing context uh, for myself. If there isn't too much rigidity, if my joints are flexible, if when I descend into the piano, there aren't any stiff nodes uh, anywhere, the shoulder, the elbow, the wrist, um, that enables a uh, really smooth transfer of energy from the body into this lever system, the action of the piano, um, and the result is a rich and warm tone that will uh, last a little bit longer. Um, now, when we play music um, on the piano, we do have this problem with diminuendo, like I talked about. Um, articulation in speech is when we make something longer and shorter. Well, on the piano, we cannot simply hold a note forever. Once I play this note, it begins to decay. And this is a fine piano in a fine hall, so we can still hear it, but it's already much softer. We pianists are often jealous of string players and of singers because they can just go on and on and on. Well, on the piano, one way that we can create the illusion of holding things is by actually releasing the first note in a series that's melodic after, and I'm a, definitely an adherent in the melodic setting, an adherent to finger legato as opposed to using the pedal for legato. It diminishes the flexibility and power of the pedal if you use it to produce your legato. Um, most music, of course, uses a mix of articulations. It's very important to be cognizant of how 
the, um, the hands relate to the keyboard and also how the pedal is involved in all of this. Mm -hmm.